jurisdiction. It's the Star Trek convention at the Sydney Gazebo Hotel. So hi to all the Trekkies who are watching and please welcome George Takai, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome along. George, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. But Good to be here. Years, years ago, when you first auditioned for, um, for Star Trek, what was going through your mind as you auditioned for it? Well, my agent called and he told me he had an appointment set up for me with Gene Roddenberry, which didn't mean a thing to me. Then he said it was uh, a science fiction project, which was interesting. But what really caught my ear was when he said it's a um, series and the part was a potential regular role. Now that's when uh, my ears perked up because that, that meant uh, if I got the part, I'd, it'd be steady employment. Yeah. And that's something devoutly to be uh, Absolutely. To, a, to an actor that's like everything, that you just hit mecca. And, and that's right. At what stage of doing the series did you realize, well, we're really onto something that's gonna go worldwide here? Actually, when we first started the series, I predicted that, uh, well, I said I smell quality with this show, and that means we're in trouble, because television is not known for respecting quality. Mm. And so I predicted that we'd, at best, with luck, last for two seasons. And we did much better than that, we, because we lasted three seasons. I didn't think that we would become this kind of a phenomenon until, um, I guess, uh, two years into our uh, cancellation. I went to a Star Trek convention and uh, saw the, the enormous turnout of people and the, the wild enthusiasm and I, I said then that we're on to something really unique here. Did you have to go back? I mean of course you're at a convention now of Trekkies and they're all on all over the world. Did you then have to go back and suddenly study the TV show again to learn all the stuff you didn't learn while you were busy acting? No, because uh, we got to be really big on the uh, rerun circuit and syndication. Uh -huh. And so we were able to watch it periodically. As a matter of fact, uh, five days a week. Uh, and so all we had to do was uh, turn on the TV set and we can see the, uh, the original shows. And so when they started talking about doing, uh, reviving us initially as a TV series, I uh, did some homework by just uh, tuning on the uh, regular reruns. But then that idea faded. And then they started uh, talking about uh, uh, these uh, two-hour movies for television that was uh, popular at that time. Mm -hmm. But that too faded. And it wasn't until the enormous popularity of Star Wars that uh, Paramount started seriously thinking about uh, reviving us as a, a feature film. And when the box office for Star Wars kept growing and growing and growing, that cinched it for us. And, uh, it's interesting the way it all fits together, isn't it? And I, what I like about the movies... Uh uh, is that they've kept the same feel of the series. You know, the, I always thought that the, the series was about personalities rather than uh, mega laser blasts and things like that. And I, I thought that most of the movies tend to keep that feel. I think that's the uh, quality that's important. It was the chemistry between all of the various uh, characters that uh, made Star Trek such an engaging show. Plus the fact that uh, there was always a subtext of... Uh, of uh, a contemporary issue that we dealt with and of yeah. course the most recent one is about the uh, crumbling of the Soviet Empire. That's right and, and final detente and stuff. I've, I mean I must have been, I've, I've always had, I've been busting to talk to someone from Star Trek because I've always had questions you know about the show like uh, why did you always bother setting the phases to stun? Why didn't you just set them to kill once? Oh, well, because uh, we don't believe in destroying even our adversaries. Yeah, but just blast a couple just to see what it does. <laughs> I mean, every episode it was set Klingon them to stun, you. you know. Oh, yeah. now, you, you think like a Klingon. Yeah, I know. I always liked them, even despite the nasty growth. You know, the, um, what, what were some other questions? Uh, we're light years in the future and the best we can come up with in clothing is skivvies. I mean, this right... <laughs> I just, I don't know, I, I was always nervous of that concept too, I must admit. Well, I'll, let me tell you, you know, when we started uh, making the movies of uh, Star Trek, we had those uh, spandex, body tight oh, uh, yeah. costumes, one piece, you know, with the boots all attached. That's right, a great look. It, it may have looked great, but it was murder to get into them. Really? We couldn't dress ourselves. We all, each individually, had to have our dressers because the zipper went up around underneath our armpits and then wound up uh, uh, in back. Now, it may have looked good, but what the designer didn't account for was what was in those uh, costumes were organic creatures that had to answer <laughs> Mother Nature's call periodically. And grown men and women couldn't answer that call alone. 
We had to have our dressers follow us uh, oh. into the loo. See, that explains why you always had your pants tucked in your boots, though. Because I, mean, <laughs> I, I wondered about that as well, you know. So did you, did you used to go around trying the Vulcan neck pinch on people? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, that's not, it, not something you want to say. We don't have Spock's strength. It wouldn't work with us. Sure, I understand that. Now, George, unlike a lot of uh, um, actors who are in very famous series, they tend to get locked into it and, oh, that's the only thing they can do. You've done lots of different movies and lots of different roles. How did you manage to, uh, well, not break, uh, break free, but be able to run the two simultaneously? I've been lucky, I guess, and that's what, uh, you know, that's the most important ingredient in show business. Not talent, not looks, not anything like that. It's dumb luck that gets mm. you by, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to uh, wind up with some wonderful, challenging stretches uh, from, uh, from Sue. As a matter of fact, that film that I did in uh, Australia with Brian Brown. Sure, Blood, Blood Oath. Oath. Yeah. That was a great stretch. I really loved singing my teeth into that character of mm. uh, uh, Baron Takahashi. Well, that was a great role and a, and a really good film, actually. I was talking to one of the cast on Tonight Live not so long ago, mm. and it was terrific. I, I wish we had more time to talk. There's so much that, that I want to chat to you about, but unfortunately we don't. We have to let you get off, and uh, we have to pull the plug on our satellite. So, George, thanks so much for being a part of Tonight Live, and live long and prosper, as they say in the classics. Same to you. See you later, George. Isn't that great? Such a great TV series.